This is the new uncut version of The Old House by E.D. Testerman. Chris Butler was a nine-year-old boy. He and his family lived in Buffalo, Missouri, near the Buffalo High School. There was a blue house on the corner of their street, and no one seemed to be able to stay in there for very long. Every time Chris would go by the old blue house, chills ran down his body. He did not like how the old house made him feel. He could feel the place was not right, and he never stuck around for very long before fear filled him, and he would take off. The school had let out for the summer. Chris and the other kids were riding their bikes all over the neighborhood. They were playing cops and robbers, chasing each other. They rode by the blue house, and Chris stopped. In his head, he could hear a girl's voice call out to him. Come to me. Chris was in a trance. In his mind, he could see a figure of a beautiful girl. Her hair fluttered with the breeze, and her skin shined from the light of the sun. He felt the pull to her. He could not shake the feeling that he wanted to be with her. Like they were meant to be together. The other kids watched him. They all laughed as Chris was fixated on the old blue house. They called out to him, but he ignored them. Rachel laid her bike down on the road and walked up to him. The others followed her. He did not notice the other kids approaching him. Rachel touched him on the shoulder and Chris jumped. Are you okay, Chris? asked Rachel. Chris did not answer. He just slowly turned back to the house. The sensation of going to the girl grew stronger with every second he was there. Buck laughed. I'll give you five bucks if you go in there. Chris ignored him. Chris was focused on the voice. Come to me, it said again. Buck pushed Chris. Chris spun around quickly and met Buck's gaze. Buck's face turned serious. Are you a coward? I said I'd give you five bucks if you go in there. I'm no coward, bellowed Chris. Good. Then you go in there, claimed Buck. Chris slowly turned towards the house. He wanted to go inside, and at the same time, he did not. He could feel the pull to her, but something in the back of his mind screamed, Run! Chris just stood there and looked at the old blue house. Buck laughed. I knew you were ch- <laughs> They all laughed except for Chris. They got back on their bikes and rode away. After supper that night, Chris went to his room and turned his laptop on. He started looking over old newspaper articles about the blue house. Apparently, the house belonged to an old man named Potter. He was known as the local crazy. He was always chasing kids away. He would yell, Stay away from my house. It is evil. It will kill you. Stay away. Back on 16 December 1969, the local Buffalo police were called out to Potter's house. He had come home from work and found his wife and daughter had been drained of liquid and life. It is still, to this day, an unsolved mystery. New detectives are constantly trying to solve this case. Once they enter the home, they quit their job and move away. Old man Potter died in his home on 13 July 1990. They found his remains the same as his family's. Since then, they have tried renting and selling the house. People would move in and within a week move out as fast as possible. Priest went into the house and left running and screaming. The bank owns the property and has it up for sale, well below market value. They cannot keep anyone in the home. They tried bulldozing it down, and every time a dozer got close, the equipment would burst into flames. They sent a demolition man in once. Before he reached the porch, his demolitions went off, killing four people. Everyone in the town knows this place is cursed and tries to stay away. Later that night, Chris was tossing and turning in his sleep. A beautiful girl around his age tormented his dreams. Come to me, Chris. I want to play with you. Come to me. The girl's voice was the same 
that was calling to him from the house. His body began to feel like it was on fire, like all the fluids in his body were evaporating. Chris shot up from his bed. Sweat was pouring off him, and he was breathing heavily. He looked all around his room. He was alone, and that made him feel better. He got up and turned the lamp on that was on his desk. Feeling safer, he went back to sleep. The next morning, he got up and ate breakfast. He and the other kids were planning on riding their bikes around again today. He cleaned his dishes after he was done eating, and then he ran out the back door. He got onto his bike and rode off. They all met at the park and played for a while. When they were done, they headed back to their neighborhood. They stopped in front of the blue house. Chris could hear the voice call to him again. He laid his bike down and slowly walked to the house. The other kids screamed at him not to go in, but he could not hear them. When Chris entered the home, visions of a field with flowers and butterflies appeared to him. The girl was there smiling and held her hand out for him to take. He took her hand, and in an instant, the vision turned to horror. The doors and windows slammed shut, and the other kids could hear Chris screaming inside. It sounded like he was being tortured. Rachel raced back to her house and grabbed her mom. The girl that Chris had been seeing suddenly turned into this old, dried-up-looking mummy. She laughed an evil laugh, and Egyptian symbols could be seen all over. One stood out amongst the rest. It was a small figure on the fireplace. It was a small statue that had the head of a crocodile, the upper body of a lion, and the lower body of a hippopotamus. He could feel his life force being sucked into this statue. His body began to heat, and he could feel the fluids in his body evaporating. He could feel the tug of his soul as it all spiraled into this statue. He screamed out in pain and horror. Chris's parents ran up to the front door and started trying to knock it down. All they could hear was an evil female laugh come from within. The Buffalo police arrived and they were able to bust the door in. Chris's mom screamed out a blood-curdling scream. There on the floor were the smoky remains of her son, Chris. Chris's dad ran over to his son and tried to pick him up. His remains were hot to the touch. It looked like he had been drained of all of his fluids in life. From upstairs came a little girl's voice. One, two, I will be seeing you. Three, four, I crave for more. Five, six, y'all make me sick. Seven, eight, you all taste too great. Nine, ten, never see Chris again. The house started shaking and the girl started laughing. Chris's dad pulled out a book of matches and lit them. He tossed them onto a wadded stack of old papers, and they caught instantly. What are you doing? cried out the voice. In a matter of seconds, the house was engulfed in flames. They could hear the voice scream out. The whole neighborhood watched as the house burnt to the ground. No one tried to put it out. And they were all relieved to watch it be destroyed. A year later, Rachel was riding by the remains of the old house. She looked at the burnt remains of that old blue house. There on the fireplace was a statue. She heard the voice in her head. Come to me. I want to play. Come to me.